Oh, I've been waiting for these for so long. I'm very excited to get these out of the box. A couple of the new AC 4400s from Atherin Genesis. So uh, I'm gonna start by taking them out of the box. We're gonna take an up close look at them. I'm gonna install a couple of Loke Sound 5 uh, sound decoders in them. And then we're gonna weather them up pretty good. And hopefully if the sun hasn't gone down by then, we're gonna take them outside and photograph them under natural sunlight. So let's get going on that. Start here with the CSX engine first. Get it out of the box and we've got some, some room to work. Set that aside there for now. Typical Atherin sleeve. We're gonna pop that lid off. We can probably take the styrofoam out now. And we'll check it and make sure there's no loose loose details or anything like that. Take uh, the handrail protectors out. And all right, so to start, I can see that the uh, Handrails, you know, just a little bit wavy. I'm not sure. Typically, the um, these plastic handrails are a little straighter than that. You can't really bend them back straight, but they're not really so far deformed that it's taking away from the model. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Chain, just. Nothing wrong there, just in shipping, the, the chain's not hanging down all the way there. It is just, it's, a, it's fine. <clears throat> I like the detail. The detail's all um, typical Atherin Genesis. Windshield wipers, grab iron, stitch lights, MU hoses. <clears throat> Brake pipe detail on the trucks. But first thing I'm already noticing, I'm going to point out right away. Uh, Engine number 17 here, CSX. Um, we can see the small, let's see if I can get a little bit closer for you guys there. The antenna detail on the roof here. We have uh, the small EOT antenna, then we have the larger VHF Sinclair radio antenna and a GPS dome. In the foam of the box is a couple of poly bags with some spare bearing caps and the PTC antenna that's modeler installed. I use some tweezers to carefully pull out the padding from around the handrails. These locomotives are packed with road specific details, such as see through grills, hoses, pipings, chains, etc. The grills in the lower radiator section are really nice. I'm eager to get these out on the layout, so I better get some decoders installed and weather them up a bit. 
Now, I use a piece of plastic sheet with my foam cradle to avoid having any of the detail parts snag on the foam. Also, I try not to let the foam squeeze the model, so I'm careful not to put the cab in the cradle, only the long hood of the body. Remove the screws for the coupler pockets. Then remove the screw on the bottom of the fuel tank and remove the tank. Now you can get to both screws that are holding the body on. One is right next to the fuel tank and the other is just behind the truck frame. Gently pull off the shell. You might need to rock it a bit side to side to get it to slide off easily. These newer models are coming with sprung contacts for the body mounted lights, so you don't even have to worry about wires getting in the way when you pull the body from the frame. The enclosure for the speaker will need time to, for the glue to dry, so I'm going to take out the two screws holding the frame weight in the rear, and that's where the speaker will mount. I'm going to use an ESU dual cube speaker. I start by clipping off the parts from the sprue and then dry fit to make sure that the size of my baffle uh, is no larger than the weight that I removed so that I know for sure the speaker will fit. Then I'm going to use some thick glue. I like to use craft tacky glue since it allows for changes to the baffle later in case I want to recycle that speaker in another project. Now I can turn my attention to the body. I started by masking the windows, the headlights, the ditch lights, so on and so forth. Then I removed the handrails from the long hood. I wasn't too worried about the handrails on the ends of the model and the grab irons, so I left those in place. For the CSX model, I wanted to make it look like a toaster. This is what rail fans call GE locomotives that are known to catch fire near the exhaust stack. To do this, I cut out some masking tape in the shape of burn marks and place them around the exhaust stack. Then I mix some primer gray and some reefer white to spray a base coat. These exhaust fires often peel back layers of paint and primer on the prototype engines. Then the rust starts to set in on the exposed metal. Now I'll use a variety of paints for the fresh and the deep rust, the charred paint and the exhaust soot. I like to use cheap craft burnt umber paint and model flex rust. I brush painted these areas on somewhat thick and I worked the paint as close as I could to the edge of the masking tape without actually touching the masking tape. This will leave a thin line of the primer gray around the edge to show the difference between the rust and the char and the primer. A hair dryer will speed up the drying but it's okay to allow the different colors to mix a little bit if it's still wet. Now that the rust part is done, I use some Model Flex Engine Black and I put that into my airbrush. I'll use this to add a light streak of soot around the exhaust stack and the length of the long hood. I'll also use this around the radiator and inverter vents to give it a little more depth. Okay, so now I'm going to change up mediums and use some pan pastel chalks. I absolutely love these chalks for weathering. They go on really smooth and stick well, but still allow me to work them around the model. And if I add too much or make a mistake, I just get a wet cotton swab and wipe it off. On this model, I use black, gray, 
dark and light rust, and some mud and dirt colors. With this part of the weathering finished, I sealed everything with an even layer of dull coat. Once that had a chance to thoroughly dry, I reinstalled the handrails and set the body aside. I had to remove the tape holding the wires down to get to the 21 pin jumper. Carefully pull off the jumper board. Make sure you don't bend any of the pins on the motherboard. I spent a few minutes studying which lights were mounted to the frame and which were on the shell and how they were connected through the spring contacts. I wanted to make sure the ditch lights were already wired separately so they could flash when I honked the horn. And the ditch lights were wired that way. The model also has working number boards and ground lights. However, I was surprised that the CSX model only had a ground light on the conductor side of the engine. The other engine I bought, the SPUP patch engine, had ground lights on both sides of the model. Is this something that's a CSX specific feature? Let me know in the comments down below. It looked as though there was an extra contact and an extra white wire on the frame. I guess that means I could add some more lighting functions to the shell later if I decided to do that. I cut some brown decoder wire and soldered them to the speakers. Now, when you're using dual speakers, make sure you wire them up according to the decoder's audio limits. Your choice is either in series or in parallel. The low sound decoders can support a 4 ohm impedance, so I wired the two 8 ohm speakers in parallel. It's best to tin the wire and the speaker terminals with some fresh solder, then solder the wires to the speakers. These are really small wires and really small speaker terminals, and they can't handle much heat. So take care to be quick about uh, soldering these wires to this. Find the speaker pads on the motherboard and solder the wires from the speakers to each terminal. It doesn't matter which wire goes where, since uh, the polarity is not an issue on these speakers. With the wiring complete, I replaced the body and put the screws back in. Now, I've never liked the plastic couplers that come with Atherin models, so the first chance I get, I toss them out in favor of some real KDs. Then I put a little rust paint in the airbrush and gave the couplers a light coat. I spent a few minutes then weathering the fuel tank with some black, some rust, mud, using both paint and chalks. Once that was dry, I reattached the fuel tank. Make sure when you're putting the fuel tank back on, the bell goes to the front of the engine. On the front of the locomotive, it's going to get a long shank number 156 scale head coupler. That way the long shank will let the trip pin clear the snowplow. The rear is going to get a scale head coupler also, but it just needs a medium shank, so I put a 158 coupler on there. It's a bit tricky to get the couplers into the draft gear pockets, then insert them into the pilots. Also, the details on the pilots usually hang up on the pockets. So the use of a tip of an X-Acto knife to keep some of those details out of the way while I slid the coupler back in is a skill that takes a little time to get the hang of. Now I dry brush a very light coat of burnt umber craft paint to the truck side frames. Be careful not to get any paint on the wheel treads. The CSX version included a modeler installed PTC antenna. These are very small detail parts in the poly bag that's in the foam of the box. I spent a few minutes looking over the instructions sheet, but it didn't offer any suggestion how to mount the antennas on the cab roof. I did notice there's a small mounting pin on the detail part, but there's no hole in the cab roof. 
I didn't feel it was wise to try and drill a hole into the roof, so I just nipped those pins off the bottom of the part and gave the parts a light sanding. Then I used a very small amount of CA glue on the bottom of the antennas and tried to stick them on the roof as symmetrically straight and parallel as possible. With the model complete, I turned my attention to the coder sound file. ESU decoders allow you to download specific sound files from the ESU website. So if you're going to buy an ESU decoder brand new from a dealer, you either need to make sure you have a local programmer to download the sound file yourself or ask the shop to download your sound file before they ship you the decoder. Alright, so I've got uh, some UP coal hoppers. We're going to pull a nice long coal train with this around the layout and uh, see their performance pulling um, a longer than normal train on the grades around the layout. All right, so it appears I've got 27 of these coal hoppers. I know I've got 30, so I must have three somewhere in a in a drawer, probably needing repaired. But uh, so I've got 27 coal hoppers. We're going to pull around the layout. I'm going to run it uh, conventional with both engines up front to start. So I'm going to hang my MacRail EOT on the rear of my train, so I have that marker. And then we're going to tie on the head end and do a brake test. All right, now I'm going to run just the uh, single locomotive with all 27 coal hoppers up the uh, steepest part of the railroad and see how many cars it'll pull before it stalls out. And then I'll send in the UP SP patch there to rescue it.
All right, I can already tell it's slowing down, but it's, it's still pulling. It must be slipping. But it's, it's halfway up the hill already. Oh, it's struggling. Come on. GE power. It's really slipping now. You can see how much it slowed down. And... Oh. It's still pulling it. There it is. It's stalled out. So, 27 cars on a 2 and a quarter percent grade on a curve. Can't do it. Let's see uh, how many cars it will pull up the grade. All right, so we're gonna try this again. I left seven cars down here at the bottom of the hill. So now I've got 20 cars. We'll see if it makes up up there. It's still rolling. The engine's at the top of the hill and all of the train is on the hill there. It just barely made it, 20 cars. It doesn't help that the grade is on a curve. You know, if it were a, if it were a straight, straight incline, I'm sure it'd be fine. So one engine, 20 cars up a 2% uh, percent grade on a curve. And also keep in mind, a non-sound engine is going to probably pull just a slightly better because I had to remove that weight to make room for the speaker. Um, so if that weight was still in there, uh, you know, it may have been able to pull, you know, one or two more cars. But still, 20 cars is a long coal train. All right, so I'm bringing in the pusher engine here. I'm going to shove the rest of that up there. And then I'll consist the two together and we'll have a one by one configuration and then we'll close up this video. That's it for this video. I'm really happy with these engines. Atherin absolutely knocked it out of the park on this one. If this video helped you, be sure and like it and share it with your friends. Have you bought one of these new AC 4400s from Atherin? If so, let me know what you think of them and I'll see you guys on the next video.